Okay, second final video. So I obviously lost this footage again, but the original arm sculpt that you see, I used the exact same process as I did the legs. I The only difference is, is like the actual um, ball joint joint on the top of the arm is uh, obviously shaped different. It's more in the position that a normal doll would have it. Um, for anyone that obviously like already has a BGD, uh, you would know that uh, the shoulder joint uh, kind of goes inwards a bit, <laughs> if that makes sense. So that's really the only difference. And then to make the joint, I'm doing the exact same process. There is a small difference where instead of um, copying and pasting the arm and making it smaller to create the hole for the strings, um, I did just use a cylinder. The arm is pretty standard. Like, it's not shaped wildly or anything. It was pretty straight, uh, very unmodified from its default cylinder shape that I used. You can see I messed up the joint at first. Um, you do have to take into consideration how thin the walls are. Like, I do have uh, three 3D printed MSDs. And um, there is one where I am going to have to probably uh, modify in some way because uh, the channel is too thin on it. Uh, and that's, you know, that's, that's the thing that you do have to take into consideration when you are making the body. Um, which is really why I actually bought a printer. <laughs> so I bought my own 3D printer. I just got like a cheapo one. Um, I got the King Room. Um, something, something, I don't know. Uh, but it's the cheaper King Room one. Um, I'm just gonna print it with like PLA. Because, um... I I had actually uploaded the, all these files on trade stock to see how expensive it would be to print. And it, it was so much. It was so expensive. So I was kind of like, okay, well, I can, I can buy a cheap mini 3D printer of this. So I might as well. So I bought that. And this way, I can now um, print everything on my own. And I can double check to see to make sure all of these jointings actually work in real life. Since when you do have it just as a 3D file, it's hard to tell if everything that you're doing is structurally sound. But this way, um, I can print it. I can see where my mistakes are. And then I can go back and fix it. So, um... After the foot video, like, it's, it's, this is basically going to be done. Um, but, well, I mean, it's basically going to be done for everyone. But I will come back at a later date and be like, hey, I'm printing this. This is how it turned out printed. These are all the mistakes. Let's fix it. And then showing, like, the actual final, like, this is the final body. Um... So I'm, I will try to upload, um, I think I'm going to upload a modified version of this body onto Treat Stock, where I'm going to make the hips a little bit smaller and then probably upload it as like a tiny scale, probably like one six scale, but like a mature tiny or something. Um, if I ever do get it casted, I'm going to do it as one third scale. And of course, um, since it is my creation, I could, I could profit from it, but I know on Thingiverse, um, you can't, uh, do that for other people's work. I know that was an issue with the Polaris, like a year or two ago, where someone, um, I think they took the Polaris, which is an open source file. Anyone can go and modify it and then just upload it for free. And you are allowed to like do stuff with it for free. But there was like there was like someone that took the file and like edited 
it or something and they tried to do like a regular pre-order or something. Um, I don't know the full details since I only read um, the actual creator of Polaris's uh, post on it and I didn't read any other sources on it. But that's what it seems to be what was happening a couple years back just from um, the artist herself. So, but of course, you know, this is my file. I can I can do what I want with my own creation. And then finally, um, obviously I went on a little tangent. But here you can see, like, I'm, I'm not going to really be explaining what I'm doing for the hand. Besides the fact that if you watch uh, each of my fingers, I actually use the tube tool. And I use them with... The, um, curve? I think it's called curve. <laughs> Where you basically just draw uh, what shape you want and then you can edit it from there. So that's what I'm doing for each of the fingers. I'm just kind of getting each of the joints. Out. Oh, it's called path. There we go. So you can see I'm drawing each of these joints for where I want the finger. And then I'm just editing it. The yellow circle on it is what makes it thicker. And then I'm just kind of moving everything around to get where I want it. And then from there, I just add more details. I just render it more. <laughs> so you're just taking this basic shape and you're just making it look like a hand. And that's basically it. It's not anything too complex. Um, it is very <laughs> scary. Um, I didn't see any tutorials for how to do this or anything. And I probably would have done the exact same things that I did for the feet. Since I did film the feet first, um, I just decided to have it last for some reason. Oh, it's because the hands kind of fit more of the arms and I wanted the arms first. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was making my anime sculptures that I already do have uploaded. And I found out about the tubing that I'm using for the fingers. I found that technique while making those sculptures. And very, very luckily, it transfers amazingly to doing hands. So if I didn't find out tubing when I was doing those anime sculptures, I would have been sitting here making ovals over and over and over again and connecting them. <laughs> And that would have that would have not only been significantly harder than what I'm doing, but it also wouldn't have the same effect. Like it would look much more fake. Like it would look like an early two it would look like the show reboot from like the nineties. Or early two thousands. When did that air? I don't know. I feel like I watched it as like a very small child. Um, it would look like that, where, like, our 3D technology was kind of wonky still. So, you know, extremely lucky that I decided to take a break from this project to go work on other projects. Because I I wouldn't have ever done this. And it's, it's once again, like, it's it's another reason why you should be taking breaks while you're working on a project. Even then, like, even for my projects, I'm still working extremely fast. I don't think other people should really be working at the pace that I am. And this is really why BJ do dolls, like, and bodies take forever to do. Because when I'm, I, um, when I'm looking at this, of course, it's like, oh, yeah, everything, like, fits. But what about when I print it? Are all these pieces going to fit together properly when I have to string this? You never know if it is until I, I of course, print it. So um, my printer comes at the end of this week. So I'm hoping that I can get a full body printed in, like, I don't know, a week? Um, Since I am going to print this at SD size and I got a mini 3D, print, uh, 3D printer and my build bed, like the bed that you print on, I believe it's only, like... Uh, 12 by 12 by 12 in centimeters. So it's 120 millimeters. 
which means I'm probably going to have to print out like one piece at a time. If not, um, actually have to cut my pieces in half and then print them and glue them back together afterwards. Um, so I, like, I, and I can't really, I can't even say what, what it's going to be yet, right? Because I don't have the printer. Like, it's really hard to visualize how big these sizes are when I don't have it in front of me. I have, I have, you know, like, rulers, but that only helps me so much. Um, when actually having it, getting it set up and building and, you know, printing the test prints, that would show me much more, like, actually what the printer is capable of. And then even for, like, my heads... I'm going to have videos customizing those um, eventually. But I got those prints in from Treat Stock. Um, I commissioned someone in Quebec. I commissioned someone in Ontario. And I commissioned someone in Alberta to print each of my head files. And even though I took a measuring tape and I measured on my SD dolls, I measured on my April Story Anthony. And I took those measurements and that's how I scaled my doll for those prints. Um, those heads still turned out too big. Uh, they turned out way, way, way too big. Uh, I need to, when I print them myself, I need to cut them down by about half, honestly. Like, they are giant. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's just, like, something that can happen, of course, um... It's really hard to consider how your prints are going to print when you're not familiar with 3D printing. Like, I, like, I'm not at all. I don't really know how it works. Um, I've had periods where I, like, I, I'll binge watch a bunch of, like, 3D printer YouTubers, but, like, I still <laughs> don't understand how, um my doll 3D files would print in that same situation. Since, of course, those um, channels, they aren't printing doll stuff. They're printing, like, games and <laughs> weird functional things they're going to use around their house. It's really hard to get that kind of transferring of knowledge to bring these random objects into your doll files that you've been working on. Um, especially if you have no background in it. You've never worked with it. So I'm really hoping that I do get everything printed at the proper size. Um, and I mean, it's really nice that now I have these first prints and I can see all the mistakes I had. So when I print them on my own printer, I can now first go into Nomad and I can edit all the mistakes I found uh, before I print them again. Um, I'm not sure what head I'm going to do for when I upload the file. I do have multiple heads. Oh, I guess I would just sculpt a new one, huh? Um, so I, th hmm, like now that I think of it, I do think I will try to do a tutorial for a head that has a faceplate and then of a head that has a head cap. So um, I'll try to do two separate videos with two separate jointing techniques for the head. Um, most of my most of my dolls do have a where the neck joint is in the actual head and the face instead of the head cap. Um, I, whew, I'm trying to look at my dolls right now and see what I have. Okay, so my heads that are just the, the face plates are, okay, so I have my doll sheep Bernard and then all of my sheepy dolls, which I have, um, oh no, how many do I have? Okay, I have two sheepies, I have two counts. I have two pea shoes. Um, I have a Kelpie. And then I have a... Uh, oh, 
Oh, no, I have something else. Okay, so I have, like, eight sheepies. So each of those have a faceplate. Um, I also have a Yunoa head back and not the faceplate. Uh, which is in my Yunoa box. On uh, Mandrake, I was very, very uh, lucky to find a Yunoa 1.0 body with the head cap. Uh, a legit, it had all her papers, all her boxes. Uh, like a year ago, and I bought that. Uh, but I haven't gotten around to actually buying a, you know, a faceplate, so I just have the head cap in her box and her additional bust. Um, so once I get a, you know, a faceplate, then I will have ten dolls with face. Oh no, never mind. Ah, I forgot I also have a Digi doll Zodiac. Okay, so then once I get that, you know, a faceplate, I'll have eleven dolls with faceplates. And then the rest of my dolls will all be ones with headbacks. And then for dolls that have headbacks, I actually had a whole separate recording, but then I couldn't keep track of how many that I had because I kept forgetting like what dolls I have because I don't have them all on display. So I had to sit there and think like, what do I have? Uh, but basically, like I I stopped the recording and I actually like sat here and I was like, okay, like how many dolls do I have? And I think I have about 23 that have headbacks. Um, I'm looking at my other dolls, trying to see if that's correct. I think that's correct. I think I have 23 other dolls that do not have faceplates, but instead have the headback. Um... And, like, four of those are by Doll Art by Julie, who is an Etsy seller, and she 3D prints her own, like, you can customize your own little doll out of the options that she has. And then you can, um... Oh, no, do I have 24? I'm trying to think... Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I have, like, 23 or 24 dolls with headpacks, and, like, four, maybe five of them... No, I gave that doll away. Okay. It's really, really hard to keep track of what I have. Okay, yeah. 23. I have 23. Um, And, yeah. She also offers, like, uh, 3D printed jointing sculpting kits. So she prints... So she made and printed just, like, the joints on a doll. And then you can buy that. And sculpt your own doll on top of those joints. So she's taking the hard part, which is making the joints, and she's making it super easy. So you can just sculpt your own doll like that. Which I think is super fun. Um, I bought, like, one of those, and I tried it out. And, like, yeah, it works. It's great. But, like, I, I also made my body too thick for the body, for the base. So, like, it doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't really work uh, for what I was sculpting. Because obviously you can see I have a problem making everything too thick. Oh. But yeah, that's fun. I also have a giveaway, giving away a head right now, actually. It's a Charm Doll Rhea. So I had that extra head for a while and I'm giving it away on my Instagram as a Christmas giveaway. Since I've had the head for almost a year and, like, I am i didn't really want the head. I just wanted the body. So, yeah, if anyone wants a shot at getting a free Charm Bell Rhea head with two pairs of eyes and a face-up that I did, um, I am giving her away on my Instagram, sugar underscore pineapple. And, it, yeah, I'm... <laughs> I want to get rid of the head. I tried to sell it. No luck. So I'm just putting her up for giveaway and someone's going to get that head. I I don't really want it. I'm very specific with my heads. Like a lot of my impulse, like quote unquote, quote unquote impulse buys are artist dolls. Since if I want a doll that's not a specific character that I already had before the doll, it's going to be an artist doll. I really like artist dolls. I really like um, affordable companies. And I also like 
drastically overpriced companies like Volks. It's very weird. I, I have an equal amount of Volks as I do Miro dolls. Um, I usually love Miro doll. You, right now they're kind of like not giving me my order exact. So like I'm mad at them. Uh, but Volks so far has been great. Like they're very, very expensive. So I don't have many. But um, it is my favorite doll company, I would say, honestly. I hope that doesn't sound elitist. <laughs> so, like, here's a quick picture of the doll I'm giving away, and I hope I don't sound elitist. Like, I'm 23. I've been in this hobby for about a decade, for 10, oh no, like, 9 years now. And um, I usually buy dolls with, like, award money, like, after... In high school, all my award money went to dolls. Like, I don't have anything to pay for. I had no bills. Uh, university, um, once my tuition's paid for, once my books are paid for, the rest of that award money I usually get dolls with. Um, since I, I apply for a lot of awards, I write lots of award essays. I do all of those essays and all that, so I win a lot of those. So make sure, like, hey, if you're pretty good academically and you're a younger person watching this, Apply for a lot of awards. Like, there are awards There are awards based on needs, which I don't really do. Uh, but there are ones where you, like, have to write academic essays for, you need the proper grades for. And those ones, you like, yeah, go for those. <laughs> Apply for as many of those as you can. Get your coin. Get your bank. Pay off your tuition. Buy dolls. Whatever, you know? <laughs> So I've had a long time to accumulate my dolls and, you know, I like I don't have to worry about debts or anything. <laughs>